All right, it's showtime. Happy Tuesday, everybody. OVE podcast getting going, man. Going to be some storms in central Ohio today. Ohio versus everybody. It's the Torg, Scott Torgerson, QFM 96, Sam Grooms. Every Monday through Friday, whether you're watching us on Menace to Sports or on the new Ohio versus everyone YouTube channel or whatever streaming device you're using, we appreciate you. Want you to subscribe to the page. I want you to subscribe to the new YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone as we approach 2,000 subscribers. And this month, of course, we will have another sports memorabilia rewards package for you. Everybody who subscribed, doesn't matter if it's from the beginning, we've been doing it three weeks now, or future, you are in. So don't worry if you haven't won. Hopefully, we'll get around to you, but we appreciate you. And uh, remember, if you're Hurt at work or in an accident, let attorney attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you at warforyou.com. And as always, today's poll question, this one, does Caitlin Clark make you want to watch women's basketball? Of course not for Sam because he's sexist. What's up, man? I'm told, apparently Ken Mulkey thinks anytime you're criticized of something, whether it's, if, if you're black, you can immediately throw the racism card. Or if you're a woman, you can immediately throw the sexism card. But I'm stupid. Well, I throw that card you, all the way, all the way. Mind around. you, she, she 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 never answered any of the criticisms and said they weren't true. She just said they were sexist. Who, Caitlin Clark? No, no she's, Ken Mulkey, the coach oh, for LSU. Um, oh, that she's got risty, resting bitch face. She's never had. Oh, she never a, smiles, dude. She's she, a she's a word that I don't want to say. She needs to get laid. Like she, seriously, will that will the husband like will something go on there? I don't do you think do you think her husband bangs her or do you think she bangs her husband? Oh, I think she straps it on and ba- I think she gave birth standing up. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. she looks pretty, she looks like a like a real hard ass, you know. Well, she was always like she made a big deal about the New York Post article and then it turns out to be nothing. It's just like, boy, she's just even on the sidelines when they had the early lead in that game, just so unhappy. So unhappy. And we'll get into it. I watched last night's game. I wish people would stop comparing it to men's. Basketball. I think that's the, that's the biggest. I think people would appreciate women's ball more, especially the state that it's in right now with some of the stars and the players they have. If they stop trying to sell it that it's comparable or better than the men's game, I think. Do you just, think they are selling it though like that? I don't think they are. Oh, I absolutely. Think- I think that the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times tried to, before the tournament start, basically sell say that the. The women's tournament, it's time for them to finally surpass the men's tournament. But they're not like, they're not airing the games, though, so who cares what they say? They're just trolling. My, I, my, the thing I would say to you, Torg, and, and maybe this is a blind spot for you, is you don't. I don't think you watch enough of the political BS and the woke BS that comes down the pike from some of this stuff. Like, I mean, I do I do morning radio, so I see it all. I just ignore it. I mean, I think well, if you that, I think that's the issue. They're they're trying to cram this down our throats like it's it's you know something better than the men's game. And I think the And they're working they, because you because people buy it. So if you ignore it's kind of like the people who hate Trump. If you ignore him, Trump wants the attention. So if you ignore him and just let him do his thing and poor me, everybody's out to get me, all that kind of stuff. And remember, I think Biden's a fucking moron. Pardon my French there. He's a moron. And I think Trump's an egomaniac. I don't like either one of them. So, but I mean, it just it, like, oh, Trump bugs me. Then ignore him. Stop going on social media. Stop watching talk the, shows. And the Biden, what was the, Biden, South so- Park, the, the South Park episode where the, the election was between a giant douche and a, and a turd sandwich? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I watched it when, um, who was the, the trans teacher was running with Caitlyn Jenner and he, the trans teacher Mr. was Garrison. Trump. Yes, he was Trump. That's the last the last year I watched the watch South Park. But I mean, it's just when you when people go into this, whether you're woke, not whatever, except I don't I don't give a crap. But when you buy into this, Sam, like you did well, the New York Post saying this or the New York Times is saying this. Well, then you fall into the trap. How about you just scroll past it, not my read point, it and and then it goes away. I guess my point is, I think I think they would get better viewership in the if they just stayed in their lane and tried to build their own product up instead of saying that this product is better than somebody else, I think they would actually, you know, take root and the game would continue to grow. But I think it turns a lot of people off when you have all these, these pundits or commentators out there trying to say it's better than 
something else when our 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 eyes aren't lying to us and we know for a fact that's not the case. That's my that's my point. See, the only thing I see is people calling her a generational talent and they're calling her a generational talent women's basketball. I don't know who I mean the click bake uh New York Times or Washington Post or whatever it is, they want to post that and the media post this to get you to get pissed off about it, to hit social media, to comment, to like. That's kind of playing into their trap when they do. All I see is this when I look at uh, Caitlin Clark. And to me, it's an exclusive thing because I wasn't a watcher of women's basketball unless it's like Ohio State and they choked on the chicken bone. We've discussed that. And Caitlin Clark, because I think if you watch her play and just take the all the bias and just watch her play, you go, holy crap, in her sport, I've never seen anything like it. Oh, and she- it, it might not be your thing. And, that, and that's cool. But in her sport, and if you enjoy sports, I think she's worth watching just because I've never seen anything like that in her sports. And yes, I've gone to a WNBA game. I lost she a just, She just put up a 40 burger. She did a double, double, a double, double, 41 points, 12 assists against a top 15 program to get some revenge from losing the national championship last year. Like you can't, you can't argue that she's phenomenal. That's I don't yeah. think that anybody that says she's not is stupid, right? It's just the the women's basketball as a whole. Like I just keep building on your product instead of keep trying to, you know, pardon the uh, the analogy, measuring your dick against everybody else. Like just keep building your product. You're well, gonna get you want a man, so that, that could way. happen. <laughs> you know she's six foot tall. Yeah, I know. That's it. I, I didn't. Well, that's it. That's a tall woman, but like, no, no, no. There's women that on that court though. They're a lot taller. She's oh yeah, absolutely. Man. But I just didn't realize. She, I thought she was, you know, like five, eight, five, nine whipping it up. So dude, she her, could man. shoot. You see those bombs she's launching. I, I was talking to uh, Molly Haynes, who is the, just on Facebook and she's the PA voice of the women's Buckeyes. And we're just kind of chatting on Facebook, like you know, on my thread last night. And I just, man, Caitlin Clark needs to stop passing. Caitlin Clark was like faster than everybody off the dribble. And she was always looking to pass and involve her teammates. Do not look to involve your teammates. If you're Caitlin Clark, because every time she passed, Sam, someone would screw it up. I mean, she is she directly, so good. she directly contributed to 80, 80% of her team's offense last night between her points and her assists. And if she like, didn't pass, it would have been like 90%. <laughs> she is, um, do, do, I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. You do, do you, I'm not telling you what to do, but if you want to see something special, like, um, that's why I'm not a complete hater on LeBron. I just don't, I'm, I don't like, you know, the whole, you know, the announcement and going to Miami and the one, two, three, I just think he's arrogant. And I think the days of him really caring about basketball are and winning championships are behind him. But when you get to see a player like LeBron in his prime with the Cavaliers winning championships, uh, when you get to see Wayne Gretzky play live, Mario Lemieux, uh, Patrick Mahomes, people like that that are like truly special. It's a sight, even if you're like not into it. Like I'm going to the Messi game, the Miami game, just to see Messi. Uh, you know, I think those are once in a lifetime generational players. And I just think that's what she is. And man, it's a, you watch it and you go, wow, that is, and we'll get to LSU, you know, crying after the game and, and playing the victim card. We'll get to LSU. I think, Sam, when you do certain things, and it feels right to you, and then you get called out on them, and then you complain. I don't think you have a you have a right, obviously, but I don't think you could play the victim card when you kind of cause the reason why people dislike you. Yeah, let's let's say that has part nothing of the to discussion. do with the color, and it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Let's right? save let's that part of the that. discussion for the beginning yeah. of segment two because I, I got some yeah. stuff I want to add to, and I, I think you're completely right. But uh, yeah. but it's easy it, to man. play that card though. It's easy to play the sexist card. It's easy to play the race card. It's easy to play play those cards when reality it, it's reality, right? When you right, you're looking right. for a reason, and the reason's right in front of your face, you're not likable to right. some people. By the way, if I drop off out of nowhere today, like I did last week, it's not because something on my computer screwed up. It's because apparently we're we've got Armageddon via the weather coming. Dude, I was up at Indian Lake and we had to bail because, and it's sad if you're familiar with Indian Lake, Ohio, wherever you're watching. They just had tornadoes hit probably about two miles from uh, where I have a place. And they are gearing up again because they say the tornadoes are coming to that area and it could be worse than it was like two weeks ago. 
So I feel feel bad for people in those cities. The there's a complete like trailer home across the street from the hardware store and the grocery store that's wiped. Half the grocery store is ripped up. The ceiling on the hardware store is ripped up, damage to the gas station, the homes, the trees. I mean, and, and the community there has done such a great job. Uh, people from Columbus, Bell Fountain, Marysville, uh, helping clean up the area. But the area is definitely in a, a kind of a rebound uh, status, and then it's going to hit again. It's just uh, keep an eye on the weather today. I, I also want to say, and I, don't don't take what I'm about to say for me wishing severe weather and, and mass casualties and damage. But the meteorologists better be a little bit right on this one because they've been they've been on their freaking soapbox with the blowhorns since last night. Mm-hmm. Like meteorologists drive me nuts, and I understand it's not an exact science. But if you're going to raise in such an alarm like this, like there better be a reason why you're doing. it. You know my theory on weather, right? About the weather guys, the meteor. There's so is this there's tin, two- is this tinfoil hat territory? No, no, this is legit. So okay. um, one two one thing, real quick before I say this, there's a difference between a meteorologist and a weatherman. I could be a weatherman, okay? You could be a weatherman out there. Sam could be a weatherman. Um, a meteorologist you go to school for. That's that's a little different. Now, two, this is my thing on, on weather guys. And this is where I disagree with you a little bit, Sam, is the weather guy could say it's going to rain and have storms and be wrong, and no one cares because it didn't rain and have storms, right? And then if he says it's sunny... And it's sunny. Go, oh, that weatherman's great because you're you're in a good mood. So I think the weather guy goes, oh, bad weather's happening. If it doesn't, you're like, oh, thank God bad weather didn't happen. But you wrote, don't even think about the weatherman predicting it because you're just happy that there wasn't bad weather. I remember. That's my theory I, on like weather people, why they well, don't get like called even, out more. Even in the winter, like we, we had a few Fridays ago, maybe it was two months ago. I can't remember, honestly. But they're like, yeah, you know, Friday afternoon is going to be one to two inches of snow, whatever. We got six and a half inches where I live. I'm like, how do you miss it that bad? Yeah, because they don't know, dude. It's it's unpredictable. I anyway. give Christy crap in the mornings, and she goes by the National Weather Service, and I always tell her, like, my my Apple weather is better than the National Weather Service. It's always wrong. And she thinks I'm picking on her. I'm just pointing out it's wrong all the time. Yeah. How are you going to tell I, me what the weather is going to be 10 days from now when they do that? When you go on vacation and you start looking at what the weather is going to be like 10 days from now in a certain part of the country you don't live? It's always wrong. Well, I, mean, I wash the, the hell out of my car. Like, it's kind of one of my, I'm neurotic about how clean the car is, and I want to hand wash it. I'm not taking it to anybody or running it through a car wash. I remember this past summer, I'm like, all right, there's no rain for a week. The next day, it was a 0% chance of rain. Wash my car the next day at thunderstorms. I'm like, how do you, like, give yourself, cl- like, plausible deniability and say there's a percent chance of rain. Don't say zero. Yeah. That means That tells me there's no rain at all. Like, anyway. Let's yeah. get to actual sports, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, and remember, we'll tackle this. A lot of people are chiming in on the chats on this. The first segment of segment two, we will tackle this more. And so, read your comments. So I want to hit this first. Um, Notre Dame in the past few days has basically doubled down on its independence, basically saying it's never been, even with what's coming uh, or what has happened regarding the conference realignments, uh, what seems to be we're going towards a uh, a potential separation from the NCAA, and then you know maybe two power conferences or super conferences. Notre Dame is now coming out and saying they've never been in a better financial spot than ever, re- retaining or remaining independent. And I want to I want to bring that up. I've done a little research on this to throw some numbers at you, but just you know tell me what you think of this because I think they're I think they're losing their mind. Yeah, why don't, why don't you go to the break, give the breakdown, and that that's yeah. So that's- so with, with the new CFP, the new uh, playoff agreement that's coming to place, Notre Dame is going to be receiving eighteen million dollars a year from the CFP that goes live in twenty twenty six if they make the if, what would be fourteen team playoff at that point. Yep, if they make it. Yep, if they make it. So just to compare, this is more than the ACC and the Big Twelve schools. Um, and $3 million less than the Big Ten and SEC schools, which would receive $21 million by making the playoff for that year. Uh, currently, NBC is paying Notre Dame $50 million a year through 2029 for their viewership rights. Uh, comparing that to Big Ten schools right now, each big, big Ten school, except for Oregon and UW, I believe, because they came in late, uh, will be getting $80 to $100 million uh, uh, by you know having selling their rights to uh, – uh, was it Fox and uh, the CBS? So 
I, I don't understand. Like none of the numbers add up, but they're doubling down and saying that they've never been in a better position by being independent. Yeah, and and this is their uh, this is according to them, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I haven't seen the I saw the original numbers about the payout if you're an independent, and it was significantly less than everybody, right? And we we had the podcast, and I uh, if you enjoy the show, go back to previous episodes. We have them all on the new YouTube channel. They're easy to find youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. So they're all, we've talked about this before, Sam. And when the news came out, the money was significantly less for the independents. That's why we did the show. Notre Dame is going to be forced to join a conference. Now, this being said, they're still making 30 to $50 million less than like a school like Illinois when it comes to the TV rights, right? Because if they're making 50 by uh, NBC, and big big 10 schools are getting 80 to 100 that's still a significant amount of money less and this is if they make the college football playoffs now is it guaranteed they're going to make it every year probably now especially since the big 12 got desperate and had to snag up a couple independent teams you know they might make it 8 out of 10 years in the playoffs for the independent teams right but you you kind of have Oregon State and Washington State kind of hanging out playing the Mountain West right now who are still technically in the Pac-12 for the next couple of years, but they have to do something to have someone join them to become a, to be relevant and stay a conference. So I still think the big, the big, uh, or excuse me, Notre Dame still wants to be an independent. And I think they hold on to that. And this is stemming from the new athletic director who took over for Captain Jack Sparrow uh, a couple of days ago. Listen, I know who he is. He's Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, I know that's not his name. L- learn learn me, and then you'll realize everybody gets nicknames. So Captain Jack Sparrow leaves, and the new guy comes in, and this was all part of his press conference. How we're going to remain independent as long as we can. And I get that. I just think it's a new world in college football. Notre Dame wants to be special. They want to be the only, you know, the only independent out there, and they think they can survive like this while everybody else is kind of teaming up and we're going to get to the Clemson and Florida state story in a little bit, but sooner or later, it's going to benefit the schools that are in the big 10 and the sec and everybody else is going to leave behind. I, I just don't understand why they don't just shut the hell up and join a conference at all. Like there, I don't understand what they're gaining. It's not money. It's not notoriety. What is their, what are they gaining by remaining independent? I just don't understand it. And then the, the, the other part is, why did the CFP agreement even consider the Notre Dame in this? They could have they could have forced their hands, and the, and both the conferences, the SEC and the Big Ten, in the future can do the same. They Notre Dame doesn't have the leverage here, and I, I don't know if if they they either understand that and they're you know trying to play hard to get essentially, or they're too ignorant and stupid to not understand they don't have the leverage here. I don't know what it's going to take for them to come to their senses, but. If I'm if I'm the Big Ten, if I'm the SEC, if I'm even the CFP, I'm starting to put a little pressure on them, saying you guys either need to, you need to shit or get off the pot. You need to figure it out because we're done playing with your your independence and you guys getting more money than than teams that are in conference. Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I actually do think they uh, have a little bit of power from the standpoint of I don't necessarily know if the SEC would want them, but I think the Big Ten would want them. I think there's a lot of nat- Nash. Uh, national rivalries in the Big Ten now, especially with USC. They played Purdue every year. They played Michigan. They played Michigan State. I think the majority of their old school rivalries are in the Big Ten. You can't tell me that. I know a lot of Notre Dame fans here in Columbus. You can't tell me you wouldn't want to see as a Buckeye fan, Notre Dame get their ass kicked by Ohio State year after year after year. Remember, it was close last year because it was Kyle McCord. And kudos to him for coming down the field and getting that win. And kudos to Notre Dame for only putting 10 players on the field. I don't, there's no excuses. You're stupid. Um, but I would love to see that every year. So I think there's, there's, you know, old school national rivalries where the Big Ten would like to have Notre Dame. So I think there's still a little bit of that. Hey, we're Notre Dame. I think the Big Ten would love them. I think the Big 12 would look at it as, man, we could save our conference with these guys. And, I, you know, ACC. You got them about as much as you can. And then the SEC, Sam, I don't know if the SEC is interested. Sure, they would have them, but I don't think the SEC is begging for them. Well, and I think that's a good segue to, the, I guess, the the kind of the topic of the the, the show today. Um, Clemson and FSU, I don't think the SEC is interested in either of those schools either. I don't think the SEC is interested in expanding with Clemson, Florida State, or Notre Dame. Like, Notre Dame, it makes 
all the sense in the world for them logistically, uh, you know, just sheer location, the Midwest, like join the Big Ten. I think I think part of it is is they know they're going to get their ass kicked if they have to, if they join the Big Ten. They they can't go out and have the independence of the schedule that they make. They just know they're going to kind of fall into that middle of the pack, you know, one of those programs because they're not they're not relevant like they were fifty years ago. They're 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 in, they're in name only relevance. They're, they their program's not lighting the world on fire. I just don't. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think the SEC has any interest in them. Um, I don't know why they're just out there flapping in the wind. And I think what's ultimately going to happen is they're going to get left out of the CFP because finally the, the two conferences in the CFP actually flex a little bit, and Notre Dame gets left on the on the sidelines. To and then they're going to figure finally figure it out. Uh, that will be the impetus for them finally to drop in the independence BS and joining the conference. I mean, kudos for Notre Dame for still trying to stay relevant, right? We, I, I agree. I don't think they're an upper echelon uh, football program. I don't even think they're tier two. I think there might be better of the middle tier teams. Like who in the, in the past 10 years, who's have been a more successful college football team, Penn State or Notre Dame? Penn State. If, if you are going to put college football in tiers, all right, and, and while I do this, Sam, put it put this in the chat because you're a faster typer than I am. Put college football in three tiers of topness and then, you know, the of greatness and then everybody else, four tiers, everybody else, right? It'd be tier one would be what? Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama. Would anybody else be in that top tier? Uh, I would say I would say probably Clemson at one point. At one point, but I'm talking right now. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's go over the. Let's do a decade. Would Clemson be in there? Clemson probably would, right? Yeah, they won so a national Clemson, championship. Ohio they State, made a bunch Georgia. of playoffs. Oklahoma, maybe. Even though they can't win the big game, but they were constantly in the playoffs. See, I would think they're. T- I think you got to be a, to get tier one. I think you have to win a championship. And Ohio okay. State better get there because they're they're you know. Losing steam in that ten-year plan. So tier two, who would you put tier two? Uh, so tier. If, so if Oklahoma doesn't fit because they didn't win a Natty, I put them in there. Um, Oklahoma, Oregon, Oklahoma, Oregon, Michigan, Penn State. Um, who else has been? Uh, who else has been Oklahoma State? Or are they tier three? And are we doing three tiers and not five tiers? Four tiers. We could do three tiers of topness, and then everybody else can debate. Because then you get into you get into because I think Notre Dame is three third tier. I think what have they? The last time they made the playoffs, you know, they're three or four years. They're probably in with kind of wouldn't you great Notre Dame with like uh, Ole Miss? Like I think Ole Miss right now in football is better than Notre Dame, don't you? If you're talking about yeah. where the program's uh, I, going, I with Lane put, Kiffin, I'd probably put LSU in tier two as well. Yeah, put, yep, great call with LSU. But uh, I don't I think what I'm saying is but... Notre, Notre Dame isn't with those teams. Do you? Does anyone out there, and, and chime in on the chat, uh, you know, you could do the super chat or you could do stars on meta. Is Notre Dame, do they belong with the Penn States, the LSU, the Oregons, the Michigans, the Oklahomas? I just don't think they belong with those teams. So as time goes by, Sam, and we use an NIL system. We use a transfer portal system. I don't think Notre Dame is competing with those teams, are they? They got they have pretty good recruiting classes coming. But remember the uterus Charlie Weiss had like the top recruiting class every year at Notre Dame when he was there, and they couldn't do anything with it. So recruiting classes are just numbers. It's some dude watching tape going to a game from rivals and going, oh, I label this kid a four-star, right? Four star, five star, it doesn't matter. You could have top recruit classes. We saw with Chris Holman back to back top ten classes in college basketball, and he's working at the Sitco right now. Ding so ding. Here, let me, he just asked let me, me ask if I question. had my. He asked me if I had my Sitco card. If if Freeman loses three games this year, is he still the coach of Notre Dame next year? Yes. You think? Yes, I really do. Okay. That's I just my opinion. I, was... I, I guess you could have a conversation if you're a hardcore Notre Damer. But to me, Notre Dame is a three-loss team no matter who's there. So it doesn't matter if it's Marcus Freeman. Uh, outside of Jesus, I don't see anyone else doing more than what Marcus Freeman can do. And remember, if that's such a wanted job, Sam, why did Brian Kelly leave it for LSU? 
because it's not they're not in the same category as LSU. So I'm looking I'm looking at Notre Dame's schedule next year, and it's not as strong as it typically is. So they've got uh, Texas A&M, Northern Illinois, Purdue, Miami, Ohio, Louisville, Stanford, Georgia Tech, Navy, Florida State, Virginia, Army, SC. I can easily see three losses there. I could see two and then a surprise loss. Right? Florida I mean, State. SC, Florida State, Louisville. Yes. What about I, A&M? Maybe. See what the new coach can do. That that'll be that'll be a good one to see where both teams are at, right? Kind of measuring stick game. But I see I you know, you could take any game with Notre Dame, Sam, and say out Florida State, I think that's an L. And then the rest of them, you could say, well, USC is going to be a tough game. Louisville will be tough for them, right? Texas A&M will be tough for them. So maybe they lose two out of three or win two out sure. of three, and then some other game they screw up to lose three. I don't think Marcus yeah. Freeman's in trouble there, though. I just don't know what are the expectations. Do people really expect that Notre Dame is a championship contender? Notre I Dame is top. Of, I think that's part of the problem is the, the domers are so – they're so blinded by what they were 50 years ago that they think that should be the expectations in today's college football climate. Yeah, but don't, domers are stupid because they think that um, – domers think that the, every year they belong. You know what I mean? Like domers every year. I know a couple domers. They were convinced they were going to beat Ohio State. I mean, close. Who cares? You didn't get it. When was the last time they beat Ohio State, Sam? The 40s, wasn't it? Yeah. High State's got to, I think. Bing Crosby time, was number one on the charts, folks. Yeah, 1942 or something. Like, it's all time. I think it's five and two. Ohio State has won five straight. Come on. They were slow dancing with one arm on the hip and one arm up in the air. They were you, doing. The U.S. The was US was their boot up the Axis's ass in Germany when the last time Notre Dame beat Ohio State. Exactly. I just, I you know, sooner or later, I think it's going to happen, Sam. I think that they're just going to be holding on to their independence, like Will Ferrell being single in, the, in Wedding Crashers. But I think sooner or later, you just have to find a home. That's what Notre Dame will do. They'll realize, because the money's going to keep going up and up and up with this, Sam, right? You're going to see, because, because you know, the reason, and we'll get to our next story next break about Clemson and Florida State. The Big Ten is gearing up here, folks. And sooner or later, it's going to be the Big Ten and the SEC. And they're going to kind of pick and choose who they want to join their conference. And then I think all the other teams will be like in a third conference, right? I think the ACC and the Big 12 will get together and call themselves the Atlanta Coast 12 or something like that. Ridiculous, where they have three divisions of 12 or whatever the hell they want to do to survive. Um, but, but sooner or later, Sam, the money's going to outpace them. And they're going to realize, and the schools are going to realize like, hey, are we really going to give Notre Dame all this? Are we going to make them join a like kind of what you said? Are we going to force their hand and use the power to join a conference? I just don't think the Big Ten and the SEC cares right now, Sam, because I think the Big Ten are looking in a different direction for their next two members, and I don't think the SEC cares because they're making more money than anyone. So I think well, we're in a situation where the Big Ten and the SEC don't even care what Notre Dame does because they're irrelevant to them. Right. We, we've gone a little long. And what I want to do is I want to kind of hold on to that that Clemson and, and Florida State conversation uh, after kind of the, the poll question discussion for the next segment. All right, we'll do that. We'll come back. We got kind of not breaking news, but some interesting news about Big Ten adding two possible teams if they can. And then our poll question, does Caitlin Clark make you want to watch women's basketball? We talk about it next on the OVE podcast. We go to war for you. At Sugar Schnarr Trial Attorneys, we don't back down. Accident? Call us today at 877-WAR4U or visit warforyou.com for a free consultation. Know your rights because results matter. That's 877-WAR4U. 877-WAR4U or visit warforyou.com. war for you warforyou.com. Thinking of buying or selling a home? Give Lauren Torgerson a call with Next Home Experience. Lauren has been servicing the Columbus metropolitan area for 10 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer, considering building, want to upsize or downsize, Lauren can help you with all your real estate needs. Get a free market analysis for your area and get started working on making tomorrow's dreams happen today. Call or text Lauren at 614-296-3952. 614-296-3952 or email at torgersonlauren at gmail.com. 
OVE podcast. What is up, Sam Grooms? Today's poll question. Remember, today's poll question is, does Caitlin Clark want to make you watch women's basketball? Simple as that. To me, it makes me want to watch Caitlin Clark. Not necessarily women's basketball, but I love watching greatness. If you're a hater, and you can have that opinion, you could just not like women's basketball, I think she is different. I think she's something special. She's a generational talent. I think sometimes, you know, sometimes athletes put sports on a map, on the map while they are there, right? I think hockey's always been like the fourth sport, and I think eventually soccer will overtake them and they'll be the fifth sport. But hockey really wasn't anything. It was a local, regional sport that the diehards loved. And then Wayne Gretzky put hockey on a national level, kind of put it on the map. And you've had people like that, Pele, uh, Messi, Ronaldo in soccer, where they, for the U.S. fans, it puts soccer on the map. I just think Caitlin Clark is so good if you watch her. I mean, she's dropping bombs from like, it's not even, it's, it's not even the three-point arc. It should be the four-point arc. And she's dropping them, Sam, on a consistent basis and off the dribble or dribbling so good. Defensively, she's, you know, she reads the inbound pass and can like so quick and she'll take it right away from you. She is just a different type of player where you don't even care necessarily about any of the teams playing. You're just just watching greatness and cheering for her. If that's yeah. your thing. Some people may hate her because she's getting so much attention. Right. And I don't, what I'm about to say does not, in my mind, take away from, from Caitlin Clark and how good she is. I don't like basketball. I used to love college basketball. I don't like watching it anymore. Between officiating, the game, it's it's almost too slow for me now. I just, the, the starts and the stops, I don't like it. I'm definitely not going to watch women's basketball. But you cannot, I, I don't think anybody that has watched her, followed her career, or watched her play a game. Like, I went to the hockey game last night. Between periods, we were in the the wild turkey bar getting a, a a beverage, and it was on the TVs. And there were a bunch of people standing there watching it, doing it on when she would drop one in from freaking what seemed like forty feet. Like you cannot discount, I guess, the effect that she's had on the women's game and what she's doing in the women's game. It's it's absolutely unreal. But the way I see it, just my my um, desire or my appetite for basketball isn't there, so I, it just doesn't make me want to watch it all. So I'll- I'll say this about last night, Sam, and and I'm not telling you like you have to watch her. She doesn't make the game look slow. And when you have a team like LSU that's pretty decent and kind of the rivalry behind of what happened last year and the taunting with LSU, taunting Iowa, uh, I thought the game was fast. In fact, people can point out like one thing this they have in common with the men's game, the officials suck. The officials suck in the women's game just as bad as they suck in the men's game. It's universal. And Rebecca Lobo's not very good commentary she goes oh no foul on that and then they show the replay and they're hacking someone's arm and she goes and then she ignores it um they weren't calling anything on Iowa last night it was a horribly officiated game but I think the game was really fast when she plays because she forces the tempo now she's gonna have to learn that little 10 12 15 foot floater she's gonna have to learn that as part of her game as part of her game I have no interest in watching her in the WNBA unless there is some type of storyline. I'm all about, maybe it was because OSU was good this year. I was all about it, Sam. And I watched that entire game yesterday, and I could say 9 out of 10. I And you could say, oh, they missed layups last night. Well, did you watch OSU and Cornell in the opening round of the NIT tournament of how many inside baskets they missed? They missed way more than what we saw last night. So you could see bad men's team miss, and you could see women's players miss i I just think she's a generational talent where if you get to watch her play in her sport how she dominates her sport you're like that's impressive i want to uh i want to hit this super chat so we can kind of put this topic to bed before we move on to to the next college football segment todd we appreciate the five man notre dame is just wisconsin with a blue blood name blue blood name as far as like where the, the 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 programs are today, it's kind of hard to argue. They're an eight and four, nine and three program. Seems like consistently kind of middle of the pack. They're going to be on primetime games, but largely they're you, they'll be a flash in the pan occasionally on the the national scene. Whether it's winning the Big Ten or you know maybe vying for a playoff spot, but by and large, you're right. 
I, I, I disagree with that just from the standpoint, at least Notre Dame has made the playoffs and Wisconsin hasn't, right? Who in the Big Ten has made the playoffs? You got Ohio State, Michigan State one year. Michigan. Uh, team up north when they cheat with Connor Stallions, assisted Connor Stallions, right? And it's Penn State. Penn State hasn't made the playoffs, correct? So I think those are the only three teams. Wisconsin hasn't made the playoffs. Notre Dame has. So where I agree with you, I think they're in the same tier. <laughs> yeah, it's because you know, Wisconsin has to beat Ohio State in a, in a exactly. Big Ten championship. And Notre Dame doesn't have to do that, and they're playing ACC right. football teams. But I think they're in the same tier, but I will give Notre Dame's program just a little step above Wisconsin because they've made the playoffs. And I would say this, they probably made the playoffs because of their name. I'd have to go back to the year and 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 look, but they've made the playoffs though, so I give Notre Dame a, a slight edge. What uh, so we we brought this up a little bit earlier. So Clemson and Florida State are kind of dang, being dangled out there. You know, it it I don't know what it's going to take for the ACC to collapse, but it almost looks like there's enough programs in the ACC that want that to happen. So my question to you is, if if Clemson and Florida State are probably the the the, the shiniest crown jewels on that crown. Do you think that the Big Ten would be interested? And do you think that they would be interested in the Big Ten? And then, if not, what would the Big Ten do to respond? You know, I, I think that, and I was reading some articles about this uh, last night, Sam, online, just kind of do, doing like a little research. And, just you know, f- Clemson and Florida State are going to do everything legally to get out of the ACC. You saw that Clemson filed a lawsuit. Florida State filed the first lawsuit. And they're going to start throwing things to the wall and from a legal standpoint, they're going to continue. If they lose this case, they're going to try to, the legal scholars are going to try to come up with another case. This is going to be an ongoing thing because Florida State and Clemson do want out and they're going to keep challenging the bylaws of the ACC. What was that rule? You know, it's the agreement that they made. The, the grant ACC, of rights. The grant of rights. They're going to tr- they're going to keep challenging this, folks. And the thought is, is that Clemson and Florida State are going to join the Big Ten. Right now, whether the CFP is built up, uh, I think SEC schools are what making two to four million more per team, Sam, than the Big Ten teams. Mm -hmm. I I think that's how it worked. I could be off a little bit with my numbers there, but the SEC makes a little bit more per team on the CFP playoffs. I believe so. I thought they, I thought they were both receiving uh, twenty-one million a year. And the new in the new in twenty twenty-six. Yeah, I thought that it was maybe like two million more. I'll double check on that. But the thought is 18 teams in the Big Ten. And what they want to do is they want Florida State and Clemson to join their team. And they're waiting with those two spots to see what happens with Clemson and Florida State. Because then they'll do an East and West. They'll have their Eastern teams, the USC, the Oregons, the Washington, UCLA. And the West teams join one. Then Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Florida State. uh, And then Clemson would be the powers in the new Big Ten East. So that's why they could keep the Big Ten and it's just two divisions of 10. So they have two spots open right now. Instead of adding a team in the Big 12, do you really want to add Kansas and Kansas State? And with Clemson and Florida State going to be available eventually, do you really want to go and do expansion and add teams that are third, that don't bring anything to the table? Or do you wait to Clemson and Florida State are available, and then you make run at the big boys, and then you really are. Don't you think if they had Clemson and Florida State, you're at even par with the SEC? That's a good question. I, I think Florida, uh, the SEC, I feel like their top tier is always, the, the top team is always a little better than everybody else, or, you know, top team and a half. You know, if it's LSU one year, if it's Florida back when they were relevant, or if it's Georgia, Alabama, whatever it is, I always feel like they're kind of got the little bit of the edge. But I think down on that like next tier, I think there's a lot more parity than than the, the national pundits would want to want to believe. Um, Clemson's a weird one to me. I think Florida State we would talk about as a brand that's coming back. I think it's an absolute no brainer to add them. Clemson's a weird one to me because. You know, nobody really cares about college baseball. They have a good program there. Basketball, eh. But football, football is going in the wrong direction. So I, I'm curious. I wonder what the allure would be there. And, you know, you always have to kind of bring in the whole academic side of it. I don't know that either of those schools are tremendous ac- academic institutions. But 
Do I think adding Clemson and Florida State to the Big Ten from a football's perspective makes you better? Absolutely. What I would say is I would I would almost trade Clemson, though, for North Carolina, if that would be possible. I would want to go after North Carolina, and I would want to go after Florida State if the ACC collapses. All right. Well, you, you look at Clemson in 2022, and they lose to Tennessee in the, in the Capital One Bowl, right? Uh, but they were a two-loss team. They got their ass kicked by Notre Dame. But they were 8-0 at one point in 2022, right? So, and this year we know what happened. Uh, they needed a quarterback. But if you go back one year, you know, year before that in 2021 was was not good for them. But, I mean, they were a powerhouse heading in. You know, they they lose to the Buckeyes in the uh, Sugar Bowl when we beat them in the playoffs. Um, Trevor Lawrence, I think that was his uh, – was that Trevor Lawrence's first college football playoff loss? What year was it? Uh, 2020 in the Sugar Bowl when the Buckeyes beat them. Uh, no, they beat, uh, no, 19, they 19, a high state lost because the no, no, no. Were I'm talking about Clemson, they're lo- lo- Clemson. Losing. No, right. 19 was, I believe Trevor Lawrence's freshman year, 2020. We beat him. A high state beat him. Yeah. That's what I said. 2020. So yeah, that was, sorry. was his, would that was Clemson with Trevor Lawrence. Was that his first night? 2019 was Trevor Lawrence's freshman year. I believe. Okay. Do they won the championship? Didn't they? Not with Trevor Lawrence. They won it with Deshaun Watson. Okay, I'm thinking Deshaun Watson. They won. Okay. Um, they've had some really good teams. I, I think I don't I wouldn't call Clemson down and out yet. Let's see what they do for a couple years. But it's all about football, isn't it? And I don't know if North Carolina is gonna leave, Sam, because what's North Carolina? North Carolina is a blue blood basketball school. And you can lose Florida State and Clemson, and it really doesn't do anything to that basketball status, correct? But when you start losing the teams like Duke. North Carolina, uh, Syracuse, Virginia. You know, there's some blue blood basketball schools there, North Carolina State, where I think those schools are going to stick together because they're basketball schools. That That's the bread and butter are basketball. The revenue ge- generators are basketball, where for the majority of other schools, Sam, the revenue getter are football, right? So I just don't think Duke and North Carolina think like other schools. I think they're just like Kansas. That's a basketball school, right? I just don't know if Kansas cares about college football the way other teams care. I think the Big Ten's about revenue, isn't it? Well, you don't think those. And what creates more revenue? I think Florida State and Clemson create more revenue than anyone else they could add. Yeah, but you don't. You don't think if you start waving eighty to a hundred million dollars in front of these guys, they'll become a football school pretty quickly? No, because look at schools like Illinois, Minnesota, Purdue. They have the money now and they don't care. If, if I'll tell you what, Sam, if you threaten, if the Big Ten threatens schools of like kind of floated out there going, hey, man, Ohio, other schools are receiving the same money you get and they're trying to improve their program like the SEC schools do. You know, Mississippi, Mississippi State bringing in coaches. Every school in the SEC tries to improve their programs for the most part. Uh, there's a couple craps, but the Big Ten, Sam, a lot of crap there. If you started threatening schools like, hey, Purdue, Indiana, Minnesota, started proving your football teams or you're out, I think they would. I don't, they're not being forced right now. That's why if Clemson and Florida State enter the Big Ten, you're I think they're on even par with the SEC. Because the SEC at member, they average they they bring in Texas and Oklahoma. That's who who did better in expansion? SEC or the Big Ten? The Big Ten's four or the SEC's two? Oh, I I, mm, I think I, I think the Big Ten did. You think so? I think in the long run. What so what? SEC added Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah. And we're comparing those two schools. Texas is a big name. Oklahoma, eh, I'm I'm a little more lukewarm on them, but Ohio State picked up SC, big name, Oregon, big name, and a program on the rise. UW just coming off an, a national runner up. And then That's the turn, kind of, UCLA, the throw in, the, yeah, the, ugly, in. the ugly wingman, the fat friend. By the way, UCLA's I was off the by, fat friend. I was off by a year. Trevor Lawrence's a freshman year was 2018 when they won the Natty. Okay. There you go. I thought he, I thought he won a. Well, and Deshaun, Deshaun won it, right? He won it in 16. So yeah. I was, well, they kicked the crap out of us. Yeah. I had the, I had the years off. Yeah. So I, to, to me, it makes sense to add Clemson and Florida State, and it makes sense to wait and not add anyone else until you do. You you play just, the weighing game. Let Clemson and Florida State, Sam, fight this in court, and they'll eventually either the, the money to buy themselves out 
will be uh, low enough year by year. It gets cheaper and cheaper. It'll get low enough where it's going to be worth it for them to buy it out and then mm-hmm. they'll leave or they're going to win their court case and then they are going to leave. Either way, they are going to leave. So if you're the Big Ten, do you are you so panicked and don't want to be patient to add two teams than to wait for Clemson and Florida State? Or are you just going to go, gimme, 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 like the fat kid on the buffet pizza where you want to just shove the pizza in your face at CC's Pizza? Or do you want to wait for good pizza? So do you want to go to CC's and shove your fat face with pizza right away? Or do you want to wait 45 minutes for a good pie? I'll yeah, wait 45 minutes. I really, I really minutes hope CC's pie. isn't a sponsor. <laughs> CC's? No, it's God. Are they still around? I think so. But you know I what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Here. What I'm saying is just all they have I, to I do understand is your have, point. I just thought it was have, funny. Have a little patience if you're the Big Ten because yeah. Clemson and Florida State want out and well, they are the there and too. there's rumblings that they want to join the Big Ten. I don't think the SEC wants them. So, again, like to your point, what's the rush? Yeah. Well, the so, rush is for them. Right. They really want the hell out. And, and if you folks out there think these are going to be the last two lawsuits if they lose – and that Clemson and Florida State's going to go, oh, shucks, we lost We lost this lawsuit. Look at the NCAA's track record with lawsuits. Now, this is different because this is not not a not a player image and likeness case, which they are like the uh, Washington Generals, the NCAA, when it comes to those cases, and everybody else is the Harlem Globetrotters. They'll lose all the time. So this is a little different, and it's the ACC, not the NCAA. I goofed up there. I said the NCAA. It's the ACC. I don't, uh, Sam think that this is over once the case court uh, court case is over. Do you see what I'm saying? If they if the ACC wins, I just think Florida State and Clemson want out of this agreement so bad that they'll just come up with another lawsuit that they're going to throw at the ACC. And the ACC looks at what happened with the Big 12 folks, and they look at it and say, we saw a conference fall apart quickly, and we do not want to become that. Sure. I want to hit this uh, super chat because it's on topic before we go to the next segment. Gorgie, appreciate the two, man. ACC is a basketball conference. Make football independent. I think that's ultimately where it's going anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think there's a way to do all of this. Uh, when I say do all this, I mean, you know, kind of have the super conferences, have everybody kind of separate with football. You know, if ACC wants to, you know, retain their their teams for basketball that's perfectly fine but in grand scheme of things i'm talking about the 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 environment today and then where football is going in the future that's kind of the way i'm looking at this but no you're gorgie you're also right to your point you can also take the football program leave the other programs in the acc that's perfectly fine i mean the 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 football is what wags is the tail that wags the dog here and that's kind of what we're we're talking about I, I think for survival, Sam, that the Big 12 and the ACC are going to have to team up eventually. They're going to have to expand their conferences, and they figure strength in numbers is what they're going to be. And, yes, we don't have what the Big 10 and the SEC have, but we have a lot of good, and there's good in this in these conferences when they add up. Right now, the Big 12 is not appealing. The ACC is appealing, and we're just talking football here. I'm not t- Football moves the needle. Uh, Clemson and, and Florida State are the only thing keeping the ACC going. Is the ACC attractive without those two teams, Sam? Without Clemson and Florida State? Yeah. It's far less attractive. Yeah, I mean, who's attractive there? North Carolina? I mean, everyone tells me Miami's back every year, so. Oh, jeez. Ugh, yeah. It's bad, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hey, when we come back. Sidney Crosby uh, sets a record, some Blue Jacket notes, some quick Blue Jacket notes saying we could save a lot of this stuff for tomorrow. Sure. Uh, and we got uh, t- tomorrow we're going to get into the Browns. The city council is trying to flex their muscle on the Cleveland Browns. Hey, fatty, sit down and eat a salad. That's what I'd say to that city councilman. But we'll get back tomorrow. And uh, we'll hit what's on X. Sidney Crosby, though, what a night last night for him. And he's in a conversation, and we'll talk about it next. Hazmat Ohio is a firefighter owned and operated all hazards training company specializing in custom safety training for your company's needs. They offer corporate CPR, AED first aid, confined space rescue standby, spill and emergency response, and they can train firefighters, industry safety teams, and employers. Call 740-507-8802. That's 740 507 
8802. All right, let's go. That's a quick one. We got new sponsors starting soon. I just haven't done the commercials yet. They're nice. They'll wait. Um, the OVE podcast every single day, Monday through Friday, three o'clock right here. Remember to subscribe to the new channel, sports memorabilia giveaway every single month. The thing is, I want to give away this cool 16 by 20 framed Joe Montana where he's in the huddle for the drive, but we just gave away a Montana and rice helmet and I don't want to double dip. Do you know what I mean? me. Um, I could, but I want to give it people to subscribe. Are you subscribed to the new channel, Sam? Oh, absolutely. Well, then you're in the drawing. I think I even created a YouTube for my kid. He's subscribed. Beautiful. He's in the drawing then. He, he Every month when we do a giveaway. So I'm still trying to figure out the giveaway this month. Don't worry. We will do one. In fact, I think there is a big uh, memorabilia show in Cincinnati with some Buckeye players. So I might get some mini helmets and... Um, some other like Buckeye helmets. I think Garrett Wilson's going to be out there. Justin Fields, Archie. Um, so we'll get some stuff going. Don't worry. I just have to figure out what it is. Every single month, we'll do a giveaway if you subscribe to the new channel. And remember the poll question for today, does Caitlin Clark make you want to watch women's basketball? Sam is a no because he hates women. He's sexist. I'm a yes because she's special. But once she's gone, I'm not, I'm out. Hey, quickly, let's talk about LSU. And LSU... Uh, a lot of the players are complaining about the, all the hate they got on social media last night in the press conference, right? So let's, uh, it's Angela Reese, I think is the gal. So let's go over a Angel. couple things. Angel Reese? Angel Reese. Okay, Angel Reese, excuse me. Um, a couple things. Last year, they were trash talking Iowa. I don't mind that. They were pointing to their ring finger and telling Caitlin Clark, we're going to get the ring. I don't mind that. People are turned off by that. They're trash talking. Uh, basketball is a trash talk sport, much like wide receivers and corners in the NFL. They talk trash to each other. It happens. That doesn't bug me. Uh, LSU, if you do not know the story, this is factual. They left the court. They were on the court. The national anthem played. They walked off the court. National anthem was done. They come back on. Uh, they got into a, a shoving match with uh, South Carolina, the last game of the season, uh, or in the tournament. So when you do things, like taunt another player, leave the court when you were on the court and then you leave when the national anthem's on. Can you see why people may throw things at you on social media? It has nothing to do with you being a woman. It has nothing to do with your race. It has everything to do with you make, you do actions that make people not like you. Now you're using race and your sex as an excuse of why people don't like you. And maybe, maybe a small percentage really feel that way. I don't know. It's a small percentage. You're already going to have a, in life, you're always going to have a small percentage of idiots, right? But in this case, as you, Sam, they did actions, taunted, fights, talk trash, left the court for, during a national anthem. They did actions that caused people not to like them. And then they're crying about it afterwards, playing the victim card. Yeah. Uh, did anybody hold a gun to Angel Reese's head. Don't she... say that, Sam. Herbie's watching. Don't say figuratively. God. Figuratively, Herbie. Figuratively. Herbie, figuratively. I know that's a big word. Look it up. You, you'll understand. Yeah. Did anybody hold a figurative gun to Angel Reese's head when she doned uh, multiple bikinis in the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition? Oh, she was in the Swimsuit Edition? Yes. Edition? How'd she look? So, good. Yeah, okay. I figured, yeah. So, thanks for throwing me off. Yeah. Uh, who, whose fault is it really? You, you Torg, you just talked about actions and their consequences and, and repercussions to your actions. And I'm not talking about the assholes that, you know, whether it's private message on social media or Dick turn it yelling, off, turn death it. threats or racial yeah, that's stupid. stands like those guys. I don't condone that. They, they're wrong. Right. But then to bitch and moan and cry after you got beat and was it 12 points? You got, you got smoked. Yeah, that, that just makes you look like a loser, like a like a wimpy bitch ass loser. Right. Yeah. And people will probably come at me because it's a woman, whatever. I don't care. But like, it's just a terrible look like you, you bitch and moan about, you know, I'm being objectified and and what all this, you know, sexually objectified and all this crap. But you're the one that was in Sports Illustrated. Like, that's the one that, you know, some just a portion, a portion of what puts you on the map a portion of what gave your your brand 
your team, your sport notoriety, that's bringing NIL dollars to your sport and in your pockets, and now you're the victim? Get the get out of here, man. Well, Kim like, Mulkey handled it correctly when Kim Mulkey said, Caitlin Clark's a generational talent. They beat us. There's no way you can guard her. We have to score more points. They beat us. Uh, Kim Mulkey with resting bitch face, the head coach of LSU, handled it the right way. And instead of the sir, the LSU players make it, it was a game. You beat Iowa for the championship last year. You got your ring. This year, Iowa beat you. And that's the end of it. They played better. Don't play the victim card. If you want to do an interview with someone else following the game of the woe is me, I'm a victim, go ahead and do it. But we're there, it was the press conference about the game. Listen, Iowa beat you. Caitlin Clark is the a generational GOAT in that sport. So that's it. And you could say, oh, people threatened to turn it off. Turn out there's always going to be goats, but they actually, Sam, it's not like they're victimless here where they didn't do anything to cause people to dislike them. You know what I mean? And now with the anthem thing, you double down on it. You're you're playing the victim victim card because a lot of people uh after the game, right after the game, didn't know that they were on the court and then walked off the court when the anthem started. So now People are going to double down on the dislike for you because you walked out in the anthem. Ask Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, it, it does. It's a bad look. And I don't, I'm not going to dig up the whole anthem disrespect. It's it's more about your, it's more about the fact that you, you, you were antagonizing and talking shit last year when you were winning, but now you lose and now you're the victim. It's like, nah, that, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. Just own it, man. Just say he got beat. Like, just own it. That's all you have to do. And again, Caitlin Clark was unbelievable. That's why you don't, got I don't condone death threats or sexist uh, uh, epithets being hurled at these, these women. Like, let's be realistic about that. But just, you got beat. Own it. Hey, would you have a problem last night if Caitlin Clark went back at them? I wouldn't have a beef if Caitlin Clark know, did the ring but thing. I, I don't, well, it did. I, I like, they got a ring, but you can't do that. But I right. wouldn't have an issue. I like shit talk to a degree. I think when you're being that overt about it or that, um, you're making that much a spectacle of it. I think it gets a little, little too much. Yeah. But I think, you know, like chirping in somebody's ear, or somebody's face, I've got no issue with that. Especially if somebody, my problem was when I, back in my, my day, you know, 20 years ago or however long it was, my problem is I would never run my mouth until somebody would run their mouth to me. And then I wouldn't shut up. So I, I came back just as hard and would dish about, I have no problem with shit talk. Yeah. I just, sometimes if it becomes more of a spectacle and it's about you, Eh, I don't know. I could do without it. Yeah, I, I I don't care either way. To me, it to me it makes it more exciting a little bit. I just thought last night with uh, you know, with her, you know, playing the victim card after a game like that, that everybody's tough on them. People are racist. People are sexist. Where really you cause the reason why people are doing this now. Yeah, and what are you doing texting or tweeting women and giving them private messages? Yeah, yeah, I would imagine if you're in a in a position like that, um, or any kind of celebrity position, you same with the Buckeye to... fans who messaged CJ Stroud and Kyle McCord. Yeah, or right? the, the who was the guy that missed the field goal, the fifty yard field goal? Like, come on, yeah, be better. I don't like cooking. Be I don't like. I want to hit this um, this ho hockey topic, I guess, before we uh, before we hit X. Um, I'll sit on the Blue Jackets uh, info because they don't uh, they did win last night, but we can talk about it tomorrow. Um, Sydney, Sydney Crosby, um, broke a record last night. One of Wayne Gretzky's records, which. No, he tied him last night. Oh, I'm sorry. Tied, tied a Gretzky record. Anytime you either tie or break one of Wayne Gretzky's records, you're doing something right. Um, Sydney Crosby had three points last night in their win over the Rangers at MSG. Um, basically tied Sydney Crosby, uh, Sydney Crosby tied Wayne Gretzky's NHL record of averaging a point per game in 19 consecutive seasons. Um, that's unreal. Uh, and my question to you, and, and kind of where I want to go with this, is the Pittsburgh Penguins have basically traded everybody away. They've gone full rebuild. Sidney Crosby has one year left on his deal, which is next year. And my guess is uh, probably doesn't want to play much, much longer beyond that. So my question to you is, does he, does he stay in Pittsburgh? Uh, is he traded? Or does he play out the string uh, in Pittsburgh as a Penguin next year? 
you know, you've seen great players in sports want to get out to win a championship, and rightfully so. I don't blame Sidney Crosby if he wants to get out. I think it would uh, break Pittsburgh Penguins fans' hearts, but Tui wants to win. And I think there's going to be an ultimatum where if you don't make the necessarily moves as an organization to win, well, then I, I want to be traded. Whether they do that or not, I mean, you've seen Ray Bork asked out of Boston. I mean, who is more Bruins than Ray Bork, right? So you've had it you've had it done in hockey, Sam, where guys have, have won it out to win a championship. He's a competitive dude. Like him or not, yes, is he a whiny bitch? Absolutely he is. But he's a phenomenal player. I mean, you look at it, Sam. In, I can't go back to Gordie Howe because I never saw Gordie Howe play. But in your lifetime, where does Sidney Crosby rank when it comes to great players in this game? He's got to be top three, top five. You know, people don't like him here in Columbus. I get it. Um, but you got to respect greatness. And he's right there below. Um, thing with Lemieux, it's tough to grade because Lemieux right, had leukemia. And did Lemieux miss like a season or two? Um, and didn't play as, probably as long as he should have. But is Crosby the second best player of this generation? Of the Wayne Gretzky generation? It's a legitimate argument, isn't it? Or a discussion? Uh I wouldn't necessarily consider Wayne Gretzky and and Sidney Crosby in the same generation. I, and no, I no, like from 1980 on, the last 40 years. Oh, eh, but I mean, what Gretzky played his last game was in '99, correct? Something like that. I mean, and Crosby came along in 2006 ish. Well, you could so, say I mean, a... you could easily say in the last 20 years, Sidney Crosby's the goat, and then Ovechkin. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the only the only potential person. I, I mean, would modern. Compare... I mean, modern TV, Sam, where people could watch yeah, hockey yeah. from a nationwide. Go, turn on ESPN, and you'd watch hockey, right? The, That's the where only you're person from. I would say that even has an argument in that generation, maybe two, but I don't. One of them I don't necessarily consider the same generation would be Ovechkin. Um, yeah, I'll, they're two different, completely different players. Um, obviously, Sidney Crosby's won substantially more hardware, but Ovi's got a. Uh, he's got a Stanley Cup. He's also ha still has the ability to break Wayne Gretzky, as I mentioned earlier. Anytime you're in the conversation with breaking or tying a record, Wayne Gretzky, you're doing something right. He could potentially break Wayne Gretzky's all-time goal scoring number in the NHL if, if he can basically stay healthy for the next two three years. The guy's an absolute robot, a machine. I don't pending anything drastic happening. I don't know why he wouldn't. The only other guy I would say uh, of of this current generation, I would say that would compare is Connor McDavid, but he hasn't been in the league long enough. And he doesn't have the hardware. Give him some time. Oh yeah. I, 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 maybe. Yeah. I, I think yep. when, and if he ever gets out of Edmonton, he might have a chance, but that's another conversation for another day. Yeah. And, and if I could see Sidney Crosby leaving, you don't want to see it. You want to see your heroes and with their team, Jordan ended as fat Michael Jordan, the wizards. It was a shame. LeBron now a you know a Laker playing 60 games a, a season where you know he doesn't want to do back to back where his body's breaking down. You just don't want to Joe Namath with the Rams. You don't want to see that stuff, right? I mean Emmett Absolutely. Smith with the Cardinals. I was a Cardinals season ticket and saw and I saw Emmett Smith got stopped as a member of the Arizona Cardinals. First and one at the first and goal at the one. Stopped. Second down, stop. Third down, stop. Fourth down, stop. That's sad to see that when you see Emmett Smith in a Cardinal uniform. And I think Emmett Smith, didn't he beat the rushing record as a member of the Cardinals? One of the one of the major records in, in, in football, he broke as a member of the Arizona Cardinals. But it's sad to see these guys do it. With Crosby, I get it. He can still play at a high level and he can still help a team. If Sam, you could really look at it realistically if you're Pittsburgh, and this is kind of like a summertime discussion, but if you're Pittsburgh, you trade Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby is either going to walk away from you or you trade him if you don't win. So maybe you trade him would say, the only The only thing that may be uh, difficult for the Penguins to do, I believe Crosby has a full no trade or no movement clause. No, if so he wants trade, to leave, though. No, does he, though? No, no, no. No, no, no. Darren Drager put out on his podcast last week that Sidney Crosby, that's where I came up with the conversation. He said, Sidney Crosby's going to approach Pittsburgh and give them an ultimatum of, guys, we have to win or I want out. Oh, well, so, and then, okay, in that case, assuming that's true. Because he wants to win, and they're they're not yeah. making the playoffs. They're bottom of the basement team right now. So he's No, they're not. No, they're not. Aren't they? But Well, okay. You know what I mean, though. 
I mean, I don't count the Blue Jackets. They're always in the basement. I mean, but they're at the bottom of, they're right in front of the Blue Jackets, right? Yeah, they're not going to make the playoffs. They, yeah. they, uh, they're they going to miss. Okay, New Jersey. New Jersey and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, with their win, jumped over New Jersey. But they're bottom three in the Metropolitan Division, right? Yeah. So you're bottom three in the division, and you're a you're far you're not you're not far away, but I'm looking at it the eighty nine. I mean they're not going to make the playoffs. So, I mean squeaking into the playoffs next year if you make improvements, or do you want to be a top tier team? I mean if I, if I'm Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's I'm doing not a top tier team. If I'm if I'm Pittsburgh, I'm doing everything I can to acquire assets. And to go into full rebuild mode because that's part of the problem with with having players like this. And I've been telling the Pittsburgh fans for the last two years this problem. The Steelers ran into the same issues. You're getting old because you're keeping all the guys that have been there and won you these cups. But the problem is they age. And at some point or another, you're going to have to make a decision. Either we're going to get rid of them or, or trade them, acquire assets, go full rebuild, or we're just going to ride it out and kind of float in mediocrity because we don't want to see – a guy like Sidney Crosby, he's played for this franchise his entire career in another jersey, another sweat. I didn't know POS uh, Jeff Carter plays for the Penguins. But, I mean, Melkin's a shell of himself. Latang's still a good player. They still got yeah, but good. They're all, they're all old, though. Like, yeah, they traded all, away a bunch of their, their young young guys. Like, that, them's the breaks. That's what's going to happen. Latang's you know? 36. Melkin's 37. I mean, Mul- Malkin, uh, Crosby, and Latang all kind of came in at the same time. So yeah. if Crosby's old, guess what? Crosby's the other two are six. Yeah. By the I'll... way, is there an uglier man in the NHL than Evgeny Malkin? No. That is an ugly ass dude. Who was the uh, Who was the guy hanging out? Uh, hey, you guys in uh, Goonies? Chunk. Yeah, kind of looks like. I, I... Yeah. I was going to put it another way, but you're kind of thinking along the same track that I am. Yeah. I just say they they look similar. That's all. Every time he scores, we should throw a baby Ruth at him. <laughs> do you, do you do know? You... Do you know? This, uh, here's a, a stupid Sidney Crosby stat. And if I've thrown this at you before, I apologize. Do you know he has more hat tricks in nationwide arena than any other player, including really? every single Blue Jacket player that's played there? That's embarrassing. That's terrible. That That's terrible. You want to take a quick break and then we'll do what's on X? Let's do it. Quick break. What's on X? Next. Thanks for watching the OVE podcast. We appreciate it. Spread the word. We're here every day at 3 o'clock. We got a new YouTube channel and we want you to subscribe for our sports memorabilia rewards program. Throughout the summer, we're going to be giving out a lot of cool sports memorabilia, autographed Buckeye gear, NFL Hall of Fame gear from footballs to helmets, and the list goes on and on. All you have to do is go to youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone to subscribe. Then once you do, you're in. So we appreciate you watching the OVE podcast, and we hope you're the next winner of our sports memorabilia package. And all you have to do is subscribe on YouTube. All right, here we go. OVE podcast. Remember, subscribe to the page. YouTube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Appreciate you. And that's how you get in the sports memorabilia giveaway. We do it every single month this year. We'll probably do uh, this month. We'll probably do away or give away some Buckeye gear. All right, Sam, let's keep it on hockey for what's on X. Have you seen the Ryan Hart Hart, uh, men play? Ryan Hartman of the Minnesota Wild will go to Mike Russo on X. Ryan Hartman suspended three games for throwing a stick towards uh, officials. If you've seen the video, Sam, I don't know if no. he threw it towards officials or just threw it on the ice and there was an official nearby. Either way, he was pissed off. He took ownership for it. But people say, oh, he threw a stick and almost hit a ref. If you look at it. That didn't almost hit a ref. It wasn't even what? close. It's the Nancys. The Nancys out there. Oh, it's violent behavior from an NHL player. He was pissed off and threw a stick on the ice. That's the end. I'm surprised shit like that doesn't happen more often. Honestly. I agree. Like I, I would be, my problem would be, and I, I don't, I would never have the temperament for, for hockey because if I got hit hard or checked, like I would literally just hatchet somebody or. 
I do much shit. I told the story on the air. I I think I told this on the podcast. If not, I I told it on the Torgan Elliott show. I played men's rec league hockey, uh, <laughs> in Phoenix, right? And I I was, was B level, B level, three levels, B level, and the, there's only one ref on the ice, a dude's guy, and you if you fight, you're out of the league. And this dude, like, kneed me against the boards, like, came at me and just hit me in the knee in an unpadded area, and it was a cheap shot. Dude, I spent two periods really not focusing on the game, just trying to, and, like, and I'm chirping at this dude. And, I'm like, the puck would come near me, and I would take it, and I would pass it, and I would chirp to this guy of, let's go. And I'd kind of hack him a little bit, hack him a little bit, like, wanting to fight with him. I spent, I, I was a psychomaniac. Because this dude was cheap, didn't get called, and I wanted to get him back. And I just, Sam, I just followed him all game, like hacking him with a stick. And I never got a got a piece of the guy. And then in the third period, I realized, man, this is a close game. Let's get a W. The guy's a stupid idiot and move on. And I want to play like Tuesday. You know, this like Sunday. I want to play Tuesday. And if I get busted, I'm out of the league. So I chilled down. But it took me two, pretty much two periods of just acting like a psychopath. Because I, someone hit me with a cheap shot. I think I think the issue is this, and this is a this and is I a had a stick, example. I had a weapon. Th- this this dude's going to get suspended three games for throwing a stick. Yeah, but the NHL wouldn't. Was it Nick Cousins who who hit uh, Goodbranson from behind? Yeah. yeah, and then when and the NHL did nothing about it. It was a much dirtier, as far as player safety goes, a much a much bigger hit than what we just saw. But that guy's getting a three game gate. Like, come on. Do you it, wonder it's why hard to, it's hard to take the NHL serious when when you have the that dichotomy or you have the the you know the the difference between those two things? One guy gets a three game suspension and one guy just gets a two minute penalty. It's bullshit. Why do leagues cater to refs? Uh, that's a fair question. Um, like, why do they bend over backwards to tell us how good of a job everybody's doing when they're not doing a good job? Uh, I know why uh, Major League Baseball umpires still have jobs that are terrible. It's their union. Um, as far as other sports, whether it's basketball, hockey, uh, basketball, I, I, you know, I don't know, football. But, I mean, like what, they, one thing I think they that go out of they Sam, it's like they almost go out of their way, these refs, to tell us how good these referees are. And I think hockey's the best. Because I think they put enough guys on the ice, Sam, where they don't, you know, there's, listen, they're always going to botch calls, right? I think the NHL has come a long way when they added the extra linesmen where they just don't, and they do replay where you find out if a goal's off sides. I think for the most part, I think NHL might be the best out of all of them, but they, all these leagues cater to these referees where I'm just shocked going, Why? Like, why do you cater to these guys? They're not good at what they do. I don't know. I, I mean, I think Especially part of it has basketball. to do with the league. I think the league has to back them just from an optic standpoint. But what I don't understand is when you can, you can with your eyeballs, with machines, with review, whatever, you know that this guy is terrible at his job. He's consistently terrible at his job. The players, the coaches, the, the owners, organizations – no, this guy's terrible at his job, but somehow, some way, you can't fire him and replace him with a better employee. Like, that's what I don't understand. Yeah, it's weird to me. Uh, continuing on, what's on X? How about this? A couple, uh, we'll give our guys from Buckeye Scoop a little shout out there. Michigan's NCAA football team ranking, EA Sports uh, NCAA, is 81, while Ohio State's rating is a 97. We're going to get into Michigan tomorrow, but do you? Agree or disagree, Michigan's the lowest ranked reigning champ, while Ohio State is top five ever and highest ever for a non reigning champ. I mean, even the the, video game people aren't respecting Michigan, Sam. Time will tell. Time will tell. I mean, yeah, you big. I would say, even if the NCAA doesn't drop the hammer in time, like I think there's going to be high there, Michigan's defense is going to be pretty good next year, but. I think they got their reality is going to sit back in next year. Uh, Skip Bayless, awful announcing on X undisputed post its lowest audience since returning from 2023 hiatus. Did you know the lowest rating they received 50,000 viewers? 
Fifty thousand. My morning show smokes them. Smokes them. Well, so do so does Menace, mm-hmm. and they're not even on TV. Yeah. When are we going to smoke them? I, we've had shows that have smoked them. We've mm-hmm. had shows that have smoked them. We're just not doing it every day. Yeah. So We're our highest show is better than their lowest show. By the way, hey viewers, we I, I see we've got a, a few hundred people in here right now. Like the show, subscribe, tell your friends, even if you hate us. And if you hate us, tell two. Yeah, there you go. Uh, let's do uh, keep with football here on X Pro Football Talk. J.K. Dobbins visiting the Chiefs on Tuesday. J.K., dude, do not visit the Chiefs on Tuesday. J.K. Dobbins, there's still teams out there like the Cowboys, Sam, where you, and, and I would put the Texans in this category too, where you can play and resurrect your career. I'm not sold on Joe Mixon and the Texans. I know a lot of people are saying it was a great move adding them. I think it would be a great move for J.K. Dobbins to even take the bear. Don't even look for money right now with this deal, J.K. Look for a one-year deal with a team where you can resurrect your career. The Chiefs have a starting running back. Dallas Cowboys need a starting running back. We were talking yesterday about Ezekiel Elliott being in line for the Cowboy uh, position with the Cowboys to be their starting running back. Sam, if J.K. Dobbins goes to Dallas, who's beating J.K. Dobbins out for that starting running back job? The the only thing I would say to the guy like J.K. Dobbins who's had injury issues and he's been in the league as a running back a few years now, where does he have a better chance to win a ring? The Chiefs. That's why I think he's maybe thinking about that. Where do you have a chance to become a starter again in the NFL? Yeah, but my point is he's off off another injury, often injured to begin with, and what the average lifespan of a running back in the league is three years. He's been in the league three years. I I, I just think maybe the guy kind of sees the light at the end of the tunnel, years. and he's and he's trying to win a ring. Yeah, I mean, if that's if if he feels that he this is his last year in football, I get that, right? If he feels like, oh man, I've been in the league four years, I've had a lot of injury problems, I've done well when I've been healthy, but I don't even know, like, yeah, boy, it's been rough for me though. Maybe I'll just try to get a ring with the Chiefs. I get that, but if his goal is Sam, if his outlook is though, I'm finally healthy, I want to prove myself that I can be a starting back in this league, right? I, I think the right move is to visit Dallas or a team where you're going to be in a running back rotation, not the Chiefs. Well, isn't Dallas – Dallas is about to re-sign is, uh, Zeke Elliott, aren't they? Well, we brought that up, but you jump in. That's just been talked about. They haven't done it. But Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's he's, he's got some time. I mean, he's got some options. It's all about, you know, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to resurrect your career and, you know, build towards winning something? Or do you want to go to a team that's built to win now, has already won – and win a like ring two in a row. Yeah. But then where do you go? Yeah. When do you go the following season? Because if you don't put up stats and put up numbers to prove that you're an NFL running back, does a year being a backup in Kansas City, if he, let's say, hypothetically lasts all 17 games next year from Kansas City, there's a new group of running backs that are coming into the NFL and then another group after that. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you really get another shot at proving that you can do it in the NFL carrying the ball four times a game. Right. I think you could do that anywhere, but I guess you can ring you get a ring in Kansas City. Well, uh, he'll be he'll got a chance to win a ring at, at at Kansas City and be behind is it Pacheco is that his yeah, name? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean there there's still going to be a a little bit of a a cycle there where you're not getting the full full load of carries. So, yeah, I mean I can kind of see it all. It's just a matter of what he wants to do. JPA football on X Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson says rehab's in a good spot. Andrew Barry says he's on track to return for the 2024 season. We're in a great spot where, right where we need to be. We have plenty of time to ramp up throwing sessions and thing like that, but everything's going smooth. As long as I'm feeling well, the doctors and physical therapists have everyone on the same page. We're in a good spot. Is that good news or bad news for the Browns heading into the season that Deshaun Watson is going to be your quarterback week one? Well, I didn't, well, I think it's good news, but I didn't even think it was in question uh, the, well, he had a shoulder his, injury. Was going to be in the up in the air, right? Well, shoulder injury. Well, but it wasn't like a. It was like not a muscle or a rotator cuff. It was just a fracture in his shoulder, wasn't it? It'll be interesting with the Sean this. Not year. a clean break, like or a, a, a yeah full fledged break. It was a fracture. So I, I don't know the severity of the injury, but I thought if it's a bone, it's going to heal relatively quickly. And but no, they I, they I it know. was a major shoulder injury. I mean, they mentioned yeah. it during the season that it was going to be a, a major problem. 
Uh, some, you know what? Let's um, let's not touch that. Let's go to and some of the stuff we'll save for tomorrow. Uh, MLB trade rumors on X: White Sox to resign to resign Mike Clevenger. So, correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, but with Clevenger, isn't there some domestic abuse allegations from his ex there? That's a good question. I don't so know. How does isn't Clevenger he, get to get, used to get pitch a for the, He used to pitch for was he, he was traded to the A's and but he pitched for the Indians. Indians and then Padres, correct? Yeah, Padres. And then the his his ex, who the baby mama claims that she gave he gave her the herps and that he abused her, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was the herps or a sexually transmitted d- disease, and and then claimed he, right? There was a lot of claims about domestic abuse there. My point is, why does Clevenger get another shot and not his buddy Trevor Bauer? It's a fair question. Well, I think, and I just did a quick Google search. It said, uh, blah, 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 blah. Major League Baseball did not discipline him when the uh, allegations came to light. So I don't know. That's a, I'm guessing it's a but case by case. They did case discipline situation. Trevor Bauer, who's been no, a huge pain in the ass to teach. Listen, man, like across all leagues, it seems like there's a bunch of inconsistencies on who gets what punishment, what the punishment is, and what you're punished for. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm just, this is just a quick, I, I honestly forgot about that. And this was a one night stand Trevor Bauer had, or a couple, like a hookup. This is from the baby's mama who made these allegations against Mike Clevenger. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, it's a fair question to ask, but I would say if, if anything is consistent, it's the inconsistency in these, of these leagues punishing and disciplining players for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're off today or we're end of today. Weather situation going on in central ohio so keep an eye out on that sun's folks. out baby what's that the sun's out here is it i don't know if that's good or bad well they say indian lake at, they say at indian lake it, it could come down at any time and it's heading this way so well i I'll let me pull up the radar real quick because i know everyone just is dying to know Well, everybody's like watching kind of, us sam for everyone's watching us for weather it looked like it was breaking up a little bit on the radar so you so know, weather guys like wrong it, again well yeah who, would you be surprised? I would not be surprised. So it looks like by around, it's kind of, we're in the clear right now to maybe potentially 7.30-ish. But you then go. after that, it looks like, you know, half an hour after that, it looks like it's past us. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? We're weathermen. All right, we're back tomorrow. OV Podcast, 3 o'clock. Remember, subscribe, like, appreciate you. We'll see you tomorrow. See you guys.